Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today we have an art journal tutorial for you. And I'm using a napkin and some stencils. Lots of techniques. So this page is from a recipe binder. It measures about six and a half by eight and a half. It's a great size. And I've placed, I've done a coat of gesso on it. And that's important. Now, I know I'm going to put a Christmas tree on the background. So I am mixing several shades of green. This is Hooker's Green is the dark one, and Yellow Green is the other one. And they're both from Liquitex Basics. I am also adding in texture and variation by putting this on messily. But that's going to add interest to your page. I'm using a makeup sponge. Because it has gesso, the paints blend quite quickly, and although I, I do want to get some darks and lights. Now, before this dries, I am taking this evergreen stencil, and I'm going to grab a baby wipe and remove the paint through the stencil. Now, two things. This works because there was gesso on there that made the paper non-porous and the paint is not completely dry. There's some places that I have to rub a little harder because it was getting to the dry state. Now my goal here is to turn this whole page as if you were right in the midst of a Christmas tree. So I want it to look textured. I want to make it look like, like the texture of a Christmas tree. So here I'm removing paint and it's going down to almost the gesso or white. So even though I'm using the stencil to create the texture of a Christmas tree, I'm not using the stencil the way maybe that it was intended. Now I'm coming in with the hooker's green and again doing some stenciling. So I've got the lights where I removed the paint and now I'm adding some darks back. So just like a Christmas tree, there's going to be different shades of green and that's what I want to create on this page. Now, if I wanted this green to be darker, I could add a smidge of black to it, and that would make it darker, so I would have another tone. But I'm going to show a different way to get another tone in this Christmas tree. Every time I put something on top, it pushes what's behind it back. Now, I'm taking not green, but Prussian blue because I discovered by mixing paints that Prussian blue and green work really well. And it actually makes for a dark green, especially when I have less paint like I'm getting here on the makeup sponge. I'm liking the effect better. In real life, you have highlights and low lights and, and shade. If you don't like something, how it comes down, just layer something on top of it with more stenciling. There you go. In my mind, that looks like a Christmas tree. Now I'm going to add a little bit more interest, and I'm using Black Archival ink and my darkroom door script stamped. I think it's elegant script, and I'll put a link at Ninny's Napkins to this. And I'm just stamping the script. It's a very subtle, small scale addition. Now this stamp is called Merry Lights, or a stencil, and it's from the Crafters Workshop. And I try using a palette knife, and my preferred way is always going back to those key cards or old gift cards. And I'm using TCW modeling paste through the stencil, and I'm putting these this light garland across the page. Now I put it on the top 
but I want to do more of modeling paste. So, so I don't make a mess and I don't smudge that. I'm giving that a dry with the heat tool. And then I'm replacing the stencil on to add the next string of lights. And I'm trying to mix up the portion of the lights that I use or the angle that they're at. So it looks like Christmas lights on the tree. So there's the second one. And again, I'm going to add a third one. So I'm drawing this at least to the point where it's not going to smear or smudge. And then my third layer. Once I'm done this, I do stop and scrape off the excess with the key card and clean my stencil. You always want to clean it when you've used modeling paste. And here I've actually left it in. I'm scraping off the excess. That doesn't need to go down the drain. So I scrape it off, then I, you know, put it in the garbage. And then I use my Murphy's oil soap to clean the rest of it. I'm splattering with the Prussian blue. It's adding a little bit of those darks in the in the tree. It's also using up paint that I had. Like I had that little bit of paint on there. So either I wasted it or I clean it up, right? And it adds another detail. So now I'm going to place the stencil back on top. And I'm coming in with a mixture of the hooker's green, which is the darker green, with black. to make the wire and the light bulb ends. And I'm going to do that with all three tiers of the, the string of lights. Sometimes it's a little hard to get it positioned correctly. I know this may not be perfect, and I show how to touch this up later in the video. Now remember, at this time, the modeling place is completely dry. And the little bit of white that still shows the modeling paste that didn't get stenciled over almost looks like highlights that you would intentionally put in. So win-win. Now I did some experimenting to see which way I want it to go. And what I've decided to do is I'm going to take that's white gesso and a small brush, and I'm going to paint the bulbs all with white gesso on top of the modeling paste and the other parts where it's green. And in a minute, you're going to, I'm going to zoom in and you'll see, because in the middle of it, that you can see the green. And I want to paint these Christmas bulbs colored. And I'm going to get a better brightness or trueness of color if I put white underneath it. So this is just plain white gesso that I'm painting over the stencil, but I have that texture from the modeling paste. 
Now, a question for you. I am, at this point, while my plan was to paint it, paint the bulbs, and I do, I'm really liking them as white bulbs. And how many of us do, don't have white bulbs on our tree? So you could have, at this point, just left it with the gesso and not done the next step of painting on here. So again, there's options. Now I'm doing this as an art journal page, but I think this would be adorable on a Christmas card as well, especially for a cat lover. So lost some video, but I'm using yellow because the cat that I'm going to use as the focal image has yellow eyes and I want to make sure that I have yellow in there and red and blue. And I'm just painting over top of the dried gesso that I painted. Now in real life, you can see the texture of the bulbs, which kind of looks like highlights. So every, as I add every next step, it's looking more and more like a close-up of a Christmas tree. Now I'm using my liner brush with thinned white paint and I'm just adding highlights and I'm, I'm going on top of part of the modeling paste texture. Now you could put the stencil back on and stencil white on and it would highlight all parts of the uh, raised area. But I thought this was work, this worked. So now on to the focal point, and I'm using this cat, this black cat. I used to have a black cat. Shadow was her name, so I love this napkin, and I'll put a link at Ninny's Napkins. I think this is just adorable. I glued it down onto copy paper because I don't want to see the Christmas bulbs and the darkness of the green coming through. Although because the cat's dark, it may not have. And then I'm gluing this down with matte medium, gel medium in this case, because it's thicker paper. You can see how the yellow of the eyes makes it. Then I went to Pinterest and I put cat and Christmas quotes. And I found this one, oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your ornaments are history. And I just thought, oh, that's hilarious because my black cat shadow did knock down the tree and break many things many times. And I typed it with a font that had, it was a little bolder. And the black really goes with the black cat and the black garland dark green, black garland. You could also do this on a canvas panel or a wood panel. So I'm giving everything a dry. Now I'm using my liner brush and I'm just touching up a little bit of the um, cord of the lights. And it, I'm making it a little darker, a little bit more black so it matches the black cat. It's all coordinating. And I thought I just really wanted that to work together a little bit more. I wanted it darker than it was. And for the same reason, I'm edging the page in black. Just 
just using acrylic paint on a makeup sponge. That frames the picture and finishes your project. Just touching up a little bit here and there. Grab my black Posca pen and I'm outlining the sentiment. Again, this is just one of those finishing details. So the challenge for you is to do something in the Christmas theme. Use a napkin or don't. Use Christmas lights or don't. And then come post it on my Facebook book, Mixed Media Creations, Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations. Just touching up the white of this cute kitty's eyes. Until next time, go get creative.